46. I am an IT director at a credit union in Bel Air, Maryland, and I've been there 29 years. I love to sing for church. I love to reach people or to touch people, and that's what it's about. All right, come on, Mike. My favorite thing is watching my kids play sports. And um, that's the biggest thing we do. Our, our sports are a big part of our lives, so we're pretty busy. All right, let's turn this game around here. We took my daughter on a recruiting trip to Virginia Tech College, and on the way home, I started getting pretty sick, and I hadn't felt good for probably a good month, and my husband took me to the hospital. Jacob, good job for you. The day before I turned 45, um, I was told that I had a very rare form of cancer. The first thought was to immediately do a surgery and to remove the tumor. When I told my children the news that I had cancer, uh, that was the hardest part. I told them both separately and I told them basically two things. I have cancer, but I will have surgery and I will be better. This will go away. After I told my children that, I was told that it was too far spread, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do the surgery. The doctor held my hand and said, we'd like to talk about life expectancy, and I stopped him. And I, I told him, I actually got a little mad, and I said, do not put a date in my head. I don't want to hear that. I'm going to be fine, and don't go there. And he said, we can talk about it at your next appointment, and I never went back. I am. Um... I wasn't going to send her to New York with her car. <laughs> so I went to a second hospital at that point for another opinion. They felt the same way the first hospital did. I was not a candidate for surgery. They were not going to do it. It was too far spread. I actually got, I think, the same, same line. And about two weeks later, I started getting very ill, and I couldn't even work a whole day. And had made my mind up at that point, something else had to happen. This, I had two children in high school and I need to be here for a little bit longer. So I started doing my own research and being my own advocate at that point. Um, don't wear that. Why don't you change? And the next, this all happened within like two days. Um, the next day at my daughter's volleyball game, one of the mothers came up to me. She works at St. Joe's and asked me if I would be willing to see one of their doctors at St. Joe's. I told her, sure, I had nothing to lose at that point. Uh, she called Dr. Fryman, and he got me in within days. Yeah, I think it's important to see patients um, quickly because of the anxiety that, that um, is associated with a cancer diagnosis. Uh, my first meeting with Dr. Fryman was great. I actually got up that morning feeling really good. I, I was in a great mood, and I just, I, I just had a really good feeling. And I met him. He walked out of the office to look at my scans. I had brought my scans with me. And within five minutes, he came back and said, I can get it all. And his comment to me was, I, I can't believe you're this young and no one tried to do anything. Oh, he's lucky I didn't get up and hug him and kiss him when he told me that. <laughs> um, it, he, I, I, just, I, I just beamed. I was so happy. And I couldn't wait. I just I wanted to do it right then and there. She has a tumor that's typically seen in a different location. Um, her tumor is was seen in the in, was arising from the duodenum and not the stomach, where most of the GIS tumors arise from. And what was further complicating her story was she has a lung disease called BOOP, which causes lymph nodes to enlarge. And he felt the way I did. My research on the internet told me that it is very rare for this type of cancer to spread to your lymph nodes. It doesn't happen, and I have an auto immune disease that affects your lymph nodes. So we kept trying to tell the other two hospitals not to get caught up on my lymph nodes, just concentrate on the tumor, but they wouldn't do it. And Dr. Fryman agreed with me 100%. I really felt strongly that, that her, the, her lymph node enlargement was probably from her lung disease and not from the tumor, especially since, it's a, since these type of GIST tumors don't usually spread to the lymph nodes. And if it was in my lymph nodes, he's, he said, don't you want to know? Let's get in there. Let's find out. I'll take them out if it is. And he asked me a question I always ask a doctor when I go for the first time I want to know. Um, I didn't even have to ask him. He said to me, if you were my wife, this is what I'd do. 
And that was my answer. So I asked him where I sign up. <laughs> Dr. Fryman was just very confident. And I, I, he made me feel good about how confident he was. So two and a half weeks later, I had the surgery. What the plan was with her was to go ahead and operate on her, explore her, and send a few of the lymph nodes for biopsy and pathologic identification while she's on the table. And when we sent the lymph nodes, um, the pathologist said that they were just uh, enlarged lymph nodes with no cancer in them. So it was at that point, it was a go. And I think I think I do remember getting word to the family that you know that we were doing the doing the surgery, and it was a go. My surgery was on a Friday. My 46th birthday was that Monday, and my daughter's senior year, her homecoming dance was the following Saturday. So they told me to stay in the hospital is usually about 10 days, which means I would have missed her homecoming. And Dr. Fryman let me go at 9 o'clock on Friday night, and I got to get pictures with my daughter at homecoming and see her off. I did not want her senior year to be about me being sick. Her senior year needed to be about her. We, we really try to cater to our patients' needs. I mean, that's part of it. It's not just doing the operation. You know, it's also, it's also having empathy, listening to our patients, hearing what they're saying, and, and you know, providing them comfort and allowing them to do what, what's needed, to, you know, in their lives. The care they gave me was top notch. They made me feel like family. They made me feel like they cared. And above all, they took care of it. Two hospitals totally turned me down, and he took a chance, and he saved my life. The Liver and Pancreas Center. Hope at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center.